you, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I want to talk to you about the importance of heat sinks and what different stickers can make to NVMe SSDs, particularly the Seagate Firecuda 540, which is a Gen 5 NVMe SSD that's capable of ramping up to 10,000 megabytes per second read speed, which is obviously blisteringly fast. And later on in the video, I'm going to show you it completely naked, so if you like looking at tech uncovered, then stick with me for that. But I want to show you the sort of logic of why I've done this and the various tests I've gone through to decipher the best things to do with this drive and talk to you about the important things to know if you're buying a Gen 5 NVMe SSD. I did something similar to this with the Crucial T700 and I'm revisiting it again now ever so slightly differently. Now this drive is available both with and without a heat sink and if you don't have a heat sink you probably want to get one because you can see this motherboard, the Strix Z690 e-gaming Wi-Fi that I used for this build does have quite a nice heat sink on the top of it. And this is the top slot, which is Gen 5 drive on here. And it has both thermal pads on the top and bottom and some stickers that you need to remove. So for a standard setup and installation, I've done a guide separately on this where I went into all the ways that you need to go through the installation process. For example, I need to update my BIOS to get it to work and obviously update in Windows. You just install the drive in here like this on top of the thermal pads, be sure to remove all the stickers and then reseat the heat sink down on top. And then that will ensure that it runs at a good temperature. Lowish temperatures beyond the thermal limiting will ensure that it runs at a good performance and you do get the speeds out of it that you want to. I went through the various steps of this, but what I wanted to do is to show you some tests. So I ran various different tests to test the performance of this. And I started in this basic process, but then later on I'm going to show you without a heatsink and without the stickers as well to show you the difference between those. So in the initial setup, what I was doing was running, I was running Cinebench and Crystal Disk Mark because I wanted to warm up the system. So I was doing two different benchmarks, one of the CPU and one of the drive. So Crystal Disk Mark runs benchmarking on the NVMe SSD. On the right-hand side, you can see Task Manager, which is also given live performance of the drive as well. And then I've got Hardware Monitor to monitor both the speeds and more importantly, the temperatures of the drive, because it's those drive temps that can make a big difference as I've seen in the past. So if we look at Crystal Disk Mark, you'll see that after a few passes, we're running at 10,000 megabytes per second read speed and around 9,000 megabytes per second write. Although that does change depending on the sort of files that the test is sending. So if you're queuing up loads of files, it can make a difference. But the maximum temperature I got was 62 degrees C. You can see the minimum was 35. And at the current time, where the end of it was already dropping back down to 52 degrees C. So 62 is actually not too bad. I saw much hotter temperatures with the T700 from Crucial. But this is actually a decent temperature. I think that the thermal limit on this drive is actually around 89 degrees. So if you're getting closer to that, then that presents a problem in terms of the performance because it will thermally throttle. So it is worth bearing in mind. Now, this is obviously in a system where I was trying to make it hot on purpose, but it didn't have a GPU in it. So it's worth bearing that in mind. I actually didn't have a graphics card in there, so that might have gone up. But you can see those readouts here of what the scores were. Pretty decent, so it actually is meant to be 10,000 megabytes a second, so it is actually topping out at that. So the best sort of end of that performance is there. So the next thing I wanted to do was to test it without that heat sink, because you might not have one, or you might not have a comparable one. Some motherboards only have a little cover on them. So for the sake of sanity and clarity, I just wanted to take that cover off and then just leave the drive exposed like this. It's still got the thermal pad on the underside, but then when I ran through the same tests again, you can see that Crystal Disk Mark is now freaked out, and it's saying we're getting 44,805 megabytes a second read speed, and the temperature went up to 87 degrees. At this point, Crystal Disk Mark basically stopped recording. It wouldn't work anymore, and it just wasn't working. The drive wasn't working, so it obviously thermal throttled right down, so not good. Now, a lot of people will say that you should remove the stickers. In fact, when I did a video like this previously, people were commenting saying that they remove the stickers all the time. And this is what they did. They just take the stickers off. So for the sake of clarity and testing, I thought I'd do the same. I generally don't remove the stickers. And some of these stickers do have compounds in them to help with the heat dissipation. They might even have copper elements in there. You can see on this drive, there's actually multiple stickers in there. And when I asked Seagate, they said you shouldn't remove the stickers. 
and it really shouldn't make much difference. But I wanted to test it for myself, so I took off all the stickers here, and then I wanted to basically go through the same process again, reinstalling the drive, reseating the thermal pads and the heat sink. Obviously, I'm not going to run it without the heat sink because we've just shown that that doesn't work, and you definitely need a heat sink for it because otherwise it's just going to get too hot. But what I wanted to do was to test and see how much difference those stickers made, if any, if taking them off makes a difference to the performance. Obviously, the thermal pads and things should help with the dissipation of that heat and hopefully reduce the temps a bit and then maybe improve the performance of the drive. Although it's not been terrible anyway, as I showed you, 62 degrees is actually pretty good and the performance there has been pretty neat. But just for the sake of testing and for science, I'm doing it so you don't have to because frankly, the naked drive doesn't look as good as the one with the sticker on it. At least in my mind, you might prefer seeing naked hardware. So to cover up some of the nudity, I put the heat shield back on, complete with the thermal pad, and then went back into Windows and ran the same tests again. So this time, what I was surprised to find after multiple passes is that the drive max temperature was 67 degrees C, which if you remember is 5 degrees warmer than it was with the stickers on, which was quite strange. I was expecting maybe to see a little bit of a drop rather than an increase. Now obviously I should take this with a grain of salt because... The ambient temperatures might have changed a little bit and obviously it's going to vary from system to system depending on your heat sinks and your fan cooling and the performance of your case and other things. But what we've seen is an increase in temperature rather than a decrease. The other interesting thing is the stats are ever so slightly different as well. So now the maximum read speed is a little bit lower. But if I put these stats side by side, you'll be able to see the difference in the read write speeds here and you will notice some variation in them which is to be expected because it's never going to get the same data out of it even after multiple passes i tried to do it several times for the sake of clarity but what i found is there's some discrepancy in the data but my conclusion from this is that you shouldn't bother taking the stickers off but you definitely do need a heat sink so just keep that in mind either buy the heat sink version of it or make sure your motherboard's got a good heat shield on it if you want good performance and ensure you've got good airflow in the uh, as well. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Check out the links in the description to find out more related content for everything you need to know about PC building and all sorts of other things. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.